morning ladies and gentlemen and today we are in a very special car. This is a Nissan Silvia S15. Now what is an S15? Well it's a Nissan that we really never got here in the United States. As you can see I'm on the other side of the car. It's very easy to accidentally go on the left side and sit in it and go wait where's the steering wheel? Where, where'd it go? Yes having a Silvia in the United States is a big deal. It's a car that we really can't have and so we have that syndrome of we want what we can't have. So as for the importing laws and that sort of stuff, so before you ask that stuff, I don't know it. As you can see, we have picked up his baby Jasmine, the triple X Evo, and I'm currently driving down the east coast of the United States to help him move. And I'm helping him move by driving this car. I know, it's tragic. But a few things. Basically, inside, it's a nicer S14. Overall, it has very much the same feel, but it's just put together better, period. The dash isn't as clanky. A lot of 240s that I drive, the dash will pop out when I'm under acceleration. That's not gonna happen in this car. But when it comes to driving right-hand drive, I have not done it since I did my R32 Skyline review. And it's almost like you have to recalibrate your brain if you're not used to it. What I mean by that is you'll have the tendency to want to drift towards the left. And that is because the other side of the car feels almost like it's more far away. So when you take a left-handed turn, it feels like you're closer to stuff than you actually are. So the kind of rule of thumb I have as I do this is if the center line right here feels too close, then I'm in the right place. Cause I'll check both of my mirrors and go, oh, I'm fine, I, I, but I feel like I'm too far over this way or that way. And it's always been a car that looks so good in the front. That's why you see so many people with the S14 here in America convert the front end to an S15 front. Cause it looks so aggressive. The back end though of the car, kind of debatable. Some people think it looks like a Pontiac Grand Prix or something, which I can kind of see. So, I can't blame them. Out of all the cars I've ever reviewed, I've spent the most time in this one, and it's been a great experience, but you do notice the little things. First, the car is a little bit out of alignment. So, you do have to kind of pull the steering wheel over, you're kind of fighting it, pulling towards the left. Easy fix. Also, the steering wheel is a little crooked, so going straight is, it's kind of odd. Another thing is, last night we drove in the rain and it was very severe rain, very hard to see, and it was getting pretty tail happy, like a 240 kind of should, but when you're doing interstate, it's kind of uncomfortable. But the body lines of this car are just so good, especially from the side profile. I absolutely love it. For the shifter, it's a great shifter. It's a five-speed transmission, and I'm currently cruising at 70 miles an hour at about 3,600 RPM. And with that, I feel as though the car could have had a six gear. I feel like it could have had an overdrive. Is it really that bad? No, but it could have definitely had it. But a lot of people have this misconception that when you drive a left-hand drive car, the first gear is over here, but when you drive a right-hand drive car, the first gear is over here. It's not true. It's this exact same. So first gear is all the way over there from here. And you would think it'd be kind of awkward, and your first five minutes might be a little awkward, but after that, you're good. When you go from first to second though, it's a very unnatural movement if you're used to left-hand drive. Because with left-hand drive, you go first and second. It's almost a pull this way. But with this, you pull towards the left. So the first time I got in the car on our trip, I missed second gear by accident. So the Sylvia is a special car for us car guys. But for people to the untrained eye, it's invisible. During this trip, I've spent a good amount of time, and as people go by, they don't notice. It looks like a fairly normal car in the grand scheme of things. It's not like you're in an R34, which would get a lot more attention. This is almost more low key. It's the less loud R34 kind of vibe, but you know, you got rear wheel drive and all that good stuff. When it comes to speed in this car, there's not a lot. So if I slow down, I'll, I'll do downshift real quick, and go. That's all of it. 
and it pulls nice it's not like you have trouble merging onto the highway or anything it's nothing on that level you have enough torque all that good stuff but it's a naturally aspirated sr20 and this is the first naturally aspirated sr20 and i'm like geez no wonder they're all turboed you don't really care you don't really care that it's not fast you just you have such a good time having this different experience being on the other side of the car it just bundle full of smiles smiles per gallon but it's interesting being in this car as a Japanese legend and then seeing Jasmine right in front of me on this trailer and it's like such two different approaches all-wheel drive crazy high horsepower rear-wheel drive not crazy horsepower but just as fun in a different aspect. You do have some creaks and rattles in the car, nothing too severe. I mean, the car has 178,000 miles on it, and for that, it's in pretty good condition. There are some nicks in the paint and that sort of thing, but are you really gonna be tore up about that? I'm not. James is gonna fix it all anyway. He has plans for this car that, that are gonna be pretty awesome. I'm sure we'll get some other footage of it in the future. Another thing is, is the blinker and the wipers. And normally over here, our blinker is on our left hand and the wipers are in our right hand. Well, it's the opposite. So I'll go to hit the blinker and I'll, my wipers will come on. I'm like, dang it, again? I did it again, shouldn't I learn this by now? <laughs> One thing that's kind of weird is the cup holder, and not that it's a weird cup holder, but the position of it is kind of awkward. But it's it's seriously something to nitpick about. I have a hard time hating this car, because never been in one, I appreciate it, it's awesome. Think about it guys, this car's a 1999. It does not look like it's from 1999. It looks like a car that could still hold up today, looks-wise especially. As for suspension, it's on Nismo lowering springs, and that's it. And let me tell you, it's a bouncy ride. Along with the bouncy ride, which it doesn't phase you too bad, but when you go over, say, a bridge that's paved unevenly, oh man, you feel it. One other thing that I've noticed is the car does not have cruise control. Usually for a car like this, this is not something I nitpick about, but when you're driving upwards of 14 hours plus maybe, you start to notice it when you've been spoiled with cruise control. So you gotta you got like position your foot just the right way to get that perfect speed and uh, so your foot doesn't cramp up. James also has an aftermarket deck so you can plug your iPhone in and actually listen to your music. So that's nice because here in America, we have stations that go past 89 FM, but this radio doesn't go past 89 FM because in Japan, forgive me if I'm wrong, it doesn't go past there or something along those lines. There's always a lot of talk of, you know, which cars have souls, which car has personality. And this is one of those cars that has a soul. I mean, they oh, that usually goes to like the old muscle cars or something along those lines or Italian supercars. But this car, it's quiet overall. The motor's quiet, the exhaust is stocks, so it's fairly quiet. It's not that thrilling, if that makes sense. But just for the sheer experience, it's great. As for the gas mileage, it does fairly well. I've been doing these four to five hour legs on this trip and it's a little bit under half a tank. So I can't give you about an exact number. But that, that's a good amount of driving and still having a decent amount of gas left. So that's good. It is pretty funny though when you go past somebody and they look over, they look into the window and there's nobody in the driver's seat and they're like, what? 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 I'm the most badass mailman of all time. <laughs> Another thing you have to get used to is that it's in kilometers per hour rather than miles per hour. And you have to calibrate your brain to be like, okay, if this is this fast, then what is it in miles per hour? But it gets pretty easy when when you watch so many like car reviews online and that sort of thing, when they're like, it goes zero to 100 kilometers per hour, you're like, oh, it's basically 60 or 62, something like that. So it's not too hard once you get used to it, but it's very weird when you look down, you're like, am I going for 140 miles an hour? Oh, oh no. And you're like, oh yeah, duh. So right now I'm right outside Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm gonna see if I can find a 
patch of pavement that shows how bouncy it is. When you hit roads that are bouncy, it's like you just almost have to like go along with it. You're just like, oh, that that wasn't me. <laughs> that that's the bridge. It's almost like you're doing a little dance when you go across bumps. It's like this is Nismo suspension. I guess they like dancing when they engineer it. Good news is I haven't had to go through a drive-through or a toll yet, so. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Another thing I would like to add is that I hate, hate, hate driving right-hand drive with a jersey wall on your left and a tractor trailer on your right. It is not a good feeling, especially when you're on these bumpy freaking roads. Oh my God. Damn, Jacksonville, you have way too much construction. So with that, guys, I want to thank you for checking out this short little video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little interstate review of the Sylvia S15. So I will see you guys next time, and take it easy. Have a great day.